watching it, KBC, it is now uh, seven minutes to the top of the hour. My name is Ram Maguko. You're just in time for the next interview this morning. It's all about mother's health. And we shall be talking about palliative care. To be specific, what is palliative care all about? And uh, what is the definition of palliative care? How far does it go? Even when we talk about palliative care, this morning we shall be also defining the difference between a hospital and a hospice. Do you know that they're different? Well, this morning, I'm joined by uh, Ruth Were. She is uh, the CEO of Nairobi Hospice to my extreme left. Thank you very much, Ruth, for joining me this morning. Good morning, and thank you for having us. All right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, next to her, to, to the middle, is, uh, uh, Ma is uh, Perpetua Ngumi. She is a patient and a beneficiary of palliative care. She is here to tell us her story and what her journey has been all about. Karibu sana, Perpetua. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Kwa majina ninaitwa Perpetua Ngume. Uh -huh. Nimeenda safari ya safi kwa kanza. Na wakati nilianzia hiyo safari ikawa ngumu. Nikaendelea na kutibiwa uh -huh. Kinyata Hospital. Uh -huh. Wakati nilianzia kuanza kutibiwa huko Kinyata hospi Hospital nikawa ninaendelea na kemo mm -hmm. na so, utaweza kutuambia story yako vizuri si uh, asante sana mm -hmm. uh, you, and, and how her journey has been mm -hmm. perpetual mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. your story yake tena inaguza acha ni and uh, to, to, next to me is uh, Masika Mau she is a senior nurse at the Nairobi Hospice all right so uh, let's continue now uh, so far uh, just I, 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 she has told us about her, her journey mm. uh, so far. I'm talking about Safari Vanilianza. But now let's talk about, uh, uh, starting with you, Mercy, what is palliative care and what does it entail? Yeah, palliative care is an approach of care uh, that uh, we give to patients with what we used to call terminal illnesses, but now we call them life limiting illnesses. Those mm -hmm. are illnesses where instead of a patient sometimes getting better, they get worse. So it's a journey you take with this patient and you holistically take care of the patient, including the physical, psychological, spiritual, emotional, and basically, and it extends f beyond the patient mm -hmm. and goes mm -hmm. to the family, where you have to take care of the family and uh, the main carers of this patient. All right. Yeah, so it's a medical care that is all encompassing of the holistic management of the patient. Okay, yeah. and, uh, to, and uh, it, so it involves not just the patient but also the family at large, meaning yes. that everyone yeah. is affected when it yeah. comes to palliative care. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everybody is what we call the, they become a unit of care. All right, mm -hmm. and, and uh, let, let me come to you. Mm. There's a difference yes. between a hospital <laughs> and a hospice. Yes. What is the difference? There's a difference, yes, and many people confuse the two. Mm. A hospital basically focuses on curative care. So you'll have the diagnostics, you'll have the doctors around, all the e equipments that are needed for treating a patient because you want to treat and cure. Mm -hmm. A hospice mostly touches on supporting the treatment process and allaying the symptoms that are associated with an illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you find that we focus mostly on symptomatic management mm -hmm. rather than curative, because mm -hmm. you already have a problem which is not going to be cured, mm -hmm. but you need to have quality of life, mm -hmm. and we don't want you to be in misery. So we focus mostly on managing the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Mm -hmm. So, Papecho, mm -hmm. Ulianza Safari, Ukaenda mm Hospitali, -hmm. Ukapimo. Nikapimo. Uh -huh. Nini kafanyi katani? Eh, wakati nilipimo, nikaonekana nikona kansa. Kansa gani? Ya safko. Mm -hmm. eh, Nikaendelea na kutibiwa. Wakati nilitibiwa, ikawa, nikaendelea na hiyo safari, na nikakuwa, nimeshikuwa, nikidini. Dio nae nikaadikio nika barua, nikuwe na niyede hospice, ju, niyede uko, nitaesa pata dawa, na nikaeda baka uko hospice, mm -hmm. nikawa, ninafaidika. Nikaeda safari ilikuwa ngumu sana. Baka nikawa, niko chini. Hospice ikawa inakuja, inaniagalia 
baka kwa nyumba juu nilikuwa wananisaidia na madawa sasa hiyo safari yako hiyo wakati ile na chini mm. ilifika u, hali 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 gani hali ya chini ubaya wako ulifika ikiwa kwa gani sana singeweza kutembea mm. singeweza kujipeleka hospitali wakati ni daktari anituma hospice mm. nikaenda huko wakawa wa, wa, wanakuja kwangu nyumbani mm. kunitibu nikawa chini baka singeweza kutembea niko chini ninatakikana kuweka maji Nina, nikawa hata za zingine breeding iko 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 Mingi. juu mm. inatoka inatoka mm. wakawa wanakuja kuniangalia kwa nyumba na kunitibu mm. wakiniweka maji baka ikafika pahali nikaraswa hospitali mm. St. Francis wakawa wamechukua hiyo msigo mm -hmm. wanakuja kuniangalia baka huko ninaletewa dawa iko hapo ya uchugu struggling yeah even, even when, when, when it comes to uh, speaking let me come to you Masi. Uh, when you see a patient like this so how do you take care of uh, your patients even when it comes to g giving them the facilities and the care that they need so that they can be able to go through their day to day activities papicho amesema that muliko mnaenda kumtembelea how was it um just like mrs Ferry has said mm -hmm. we focus a lot on quality of life because um in the journey of the illness sometimes um the hospital is not there because sometimes the patient will go to hospital and uh, symptoms are alleviated and the patient goes home but the disease has not been cured so you find other symptoms come up when mm. the patient is at home is not able to go to hospital is not able to call for help but once they are enrolled in our program then we fo we make a follow-up and they also know that they have our number the relatives have our number and they are able to call us and when we listen to the symptoms they are presenting with mm -hmm. then we can know do we require to do a home visit but now the doctors mm. didn't, are, are not able to really get into the uh, the root cause of all these problems because you said uh, earlier that <laughs> the symptoms are there but later on you find out that there are other things that come into place do the doctors get the specific problem of the patients yeah, the, the diagnosis may be known mm -hmm. and the problem may be known but sometimes the disease takes an unexpected route mm -hmm. sometime you find if a patient like perpetual here wakes up in the morning and has severe bleeding mm -hmm. and cannot get out of bed and cannot go to hospital and cannot cannot and sometimes uh, let's get practical sometimes even money is not there Mm -hmm. So the hospital is there, but the patient cannot, cannot even raise the money to go and even pay a deposit or just pay for, for, for the services they require. Mm -hmm. So we try to walk the journey with the patient. Uh, the hospital will admit you, treat you, when you're better, discharge you. But mm -hmm. what hospice does, hospice now does the journey with you. Okay. Yeah. So we do home care. If the patient is able to come over, they come over. But even when they are not able to come, then we plan to see them in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but then coming to you, do you have uh, any methodology to now reach out to the parents? Because now the patient is not alone. The mm -hmm. patient has family. Yes. How are you able to synchronize yourself mm -hmm. with the family so that you don't look like outsiders who are coming to infringe on someone's privacy? Because at some point, it, mm. it may pass a different message to mm. the family mm. once they see many people coming mm -hmm. uh, to see their patient. Normally, we have a very good relationship with the patient. And as we assess the patient, we do what we call a family tree. Mm -hmm. We try to look at what are her support systems, who is closer to her. Then we ask her who is going to help you in your journey with your illness. So as we do that, we get to know now who is around this patient. Then as we manage her, we also now bring in the family and whoever is close to her and start talking about them. Because counseling is a very critical co component mm -hmm. of palliative care. Oh, so so you, you also incorporate yes, counseling yes, in your Yes, because without counseling, you are mm -hmm. not able to cope with your problem.
okay. the counseling is not just to the patient, it's also plus the people around the patient. Because they have to understand what this person is going through and to understand how they are going to manage this person. Mm -hmm. So we also go beyond that. We educate them on how to look after this patient. Mm -hmm. So that's how they come, we bring in the family together and the caregivers together mm -hmm. so that they understand this is what this person is going through. Mm -hmm. This is how you can handle this person. There is no need to fear. Because many patients come with very horrifying stories. Mm -hmm. Once they say they have been diagnosed with cancer or any other illness, they are abandoned. Oh, oh. Yes, so we become the family. So we try just to find out more about our family. Where are they? Can they come back? If they do, how do we help them appreciate and understand the patient's problem? Okay. So we incorporate everybody that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because mm. sometimes she gets bouts of pain, oh. but she's on pain medication, okay. which has enabled her now be able to function and move about freely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, and it has given us strength. And strength. Yeah, now she's yeah. able to eat, she's yeah. able to go about her normal businesses, mm -hmm. yeah, to, get, to earn a living. You know, you know, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nyumbani pia? Nikawa nyumbani, nikaenda hospital. Nikawa hawa iyo hospice diyo alikuwa nakuja kuniangaria. Wana nifuata fire ni naendere. Baka madawa. Na pesa ilikuwa inaza kupatika na it must have been difficult. Pesa. Pesa ni ngumu. Kupatika na ilikuwa ngumu. Nae walikuwa na nifuata wakikuja kunipatia dawa. Akiwa ni maji ni natakikana kuwekwa wananipea, wananiweka. Pads wananiretea paka kwa nyumba. Wananiretea kwa nyumba. Na walikuwa nataka kujua file ni naendelea. Juu kukiwa kungumu utaweza kosa hata baka watu wa kukuja walikuwa wanachukua jukumu mm -hmm. na wakabeba hiyo msigo yangu wakawa wananitembelea baka na, na familia yako <laughs> tangu tangu wende hospitali mm. wakasema kwamba kuna saratani mm -hmm. familia yako walikuwa wanaku uh, you know wanakulinda kivipi okay. sana sana familia yangu mm. wa kuniwachilia mm. uh, hata akiwa kulikuwa na shida ya pesa walikuwa na tunaendelea pamoja na hiyo msigo akawa wamebeba paka bwanangu akawa aniwachi alikuwa na wewe alikushikilia mkono eh, akuniwache akuniwache kamwe akatebea hata saa hii anatebea na mimi kwa hii safari kwa hii safari aka akawa ananipatia ngufu na hospice ikikuwa inanishikilia nikaona sijawachiliwa kamwe juu alikuwa kama masi alikuwa anakuja akiona niko na uchungu anakuja na dawa zange ananidunga you are your bleeding wacha nini iko stress cancer iko stress juu saa zingine utaesa eda safari ukiwa peke yake unawezwa ile kitu ilituma hata hospice ni kuwa ninajua iko pahali inasaidia ni jua nashika mtu na wamuachiri kamwe sasa wewe um, ili wanze safari yako mm. kuna venye ulikuwa unajihisi kimwili ndo 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 wende hospitali alafu ndo wasema kwamba kuna saratani mm. ulikuwa na hisi vipi hadi kafika hiyo kiwango ambao wakasema na tuko na saratani because to say the truth mm. uh, the, the problem comes in with most uh, patients mm. they tell you that there has been issues of misdiagnosis mm. that umepimwa na wamepata kuna ugonjwa hii na kumbe sio ugonjwa mm. ugonjwa kumbe ni saratani mm. ulikuwa na hisi vipi kimwili hadi ikafika kwa wangu ambao daktari akasema mm. kwamba uko na saratani okay wakati nilianzia ndio nijue niko na saratani mm. nilienda nika nikaanzio kupimiwa nikaenda uh, mwili wangu ilikuwa wiki mm -hmm. uh, ikawa wakati nilienda kwa daktari wakanipima 
nikawa breeding naenda breeding inasimama inakuja inarudi ndio daktari mmoja anaitwa dr bozile akasema niende nifanyio papis ni niangaliwe ikawa ni saratani niko naye ndio hapa walijulia niko naye naye nilikuwa nimeenda nikiwa sijui ile ngojwa niko naye sikuwa najua nilikuwa nafikiria ni kawaida naye ikawa imeenda gumu na inaenda nikifinyika mwili nikifinyika ndio nikaanza treatment when you look at her story mm. what comes into your mind looking at the mean, look at the, the number of patients outside there mm. you know uh, who get misdiagnosed uh, and later on they discover that the afghans are when it's at stage 4 mm. when it's at a very late stage you know mercy mm. when you look at the, the as mm. a as a nurse you've mm. seen how patients mm. suffer outside here mm. even when it comes to the way they get misdiagnosed i can't talk about misdiagnosis but mm. i can say most of our patients yes Diagnosis is, comes at a later stage, when they are maybe stage three, stage four. Mm -hmm. So you find with that comes the cost of treatment, because now you'll have to have multiple treatments. It becomes costly for everyone. The symptoms are more because of the treatment process. So you find people are out there who need help. And they, they just need to know that uh, palliative care can actually assist them to lead quality life and a more dignified way of doing uh, their business. Mm -hmm. they, ha they can have their symptoms managed, they can have their families uh, counseled, the patient themselves can be counseled. So palliative care, many people associate it with end of life, but mm -hmm. it's not about end of life. It's, it's about life and hope. We are there to give hope, to give quality of life. Mm -hmm. So people out there should not just hide themselves in their homes or wherever they should come out and just seek help and get that support that they need, both the patient themselves and the people around them. Mm. She mentioned something mm. about expenses. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. How mm. is it even when it comes to palliative care and the expenses? Looking at the budget of patients, because to say the truth, not everyone has the same level no, of the capacity no, to no. cater for their own medical it expenses. It is expensive. It mm. is expensive. And the one thing the government has done with the NHIF, it has assisted very much. And uh, many patients are able to get the services they need within the public institutions mm -hmm. and the private sector. Uh, but it's still not enough. It needs to be extended more so that the coverage is wider. Because you find cancer treatment, for instance, takes a while. Like radiotherapy, you might have so many sessions. So you need to be in and out of hospital for quite a while. Mm -hmm. With that, there's associated symptoms that come that need to be managed. But uh, on our part, uh, we charge a nominal fee, but the patient who is not able to pay, we still look after them. Mm -hmm. Then we reach out to well-wishers to support these patients mm -hmm. to offset those kind of bills. Mm -hmm. So people should not fear to go for treatment because of costs. Mm -hmm. They should come out. Kenyans are generous enough. They are able to support. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a nurse, mm -hmm. have you had cases where you've had to be rejected by patients or by the family? Um, Hostility. Okay, I think if, if you put it as hostility, mm. uh, maybe I would say no, because um, if you look at the, the journey of the patient, um, and especially when the disease is quite advanced, they get to a place where they're very angry, mm -hmm. very angry. And uh, if you take that personally, then you mm. will look at it as rejection. But if you look at it as a uh, a process mm -hmm. which a patient is going through and trying to cope with the disease, mm. anger is very much part of it. So okay. when the patient expresses anger and mm. resentment, then you don't take it that way. You give them time, and with time they will come to probably appreciate the care you're giving. You don't take it personally. Yeah, you don't mm -hmm. take it personally. You don't take it personally. Mm -hmm.
But not looking at you, it. You can't mm. take it personally. Mm. Yeah. Because, because that part, is that, that it's is part, part of, of your job. The, it's part of the, the process she's going the person is going through mm. okay. and it's our job to actually assist this person mm -hmm. cope with their illness. Yeah. Mm. But now how 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 far does it go even when you talk when you talk about assisting them to cope up? You you had mentioned it earlier on when when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, giving them counseling mm. and uh, you had alluded to that. But now when it comes to looking at a patient and then there are severe cases mm -hmm. that you've seen this patient's case is very severe. Mm -hmm. How do you go through the process of counseling? Because you mentioned earlier that palliative care, that it, it does not mean that sentence. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Maybe Masi can answer that because she sees <laughs> on a day to day basis. Yeah. But without mm -hmm. counseling, you know, counseling helps you to understand what your problem is and uh, how to deal with it because it's you to come with the answers on how you are going to cope with the, the problem. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a all gloom and uh, because you'll be told you're sick. When you're told you have cancer, many people feel now I'm dying tomorrow. Yeah. The same thing happened with HIV and AIDS when it came here. And to date, we have treatment and people are able to live their lives for many years. The same for cancer. If it's managed well, managed early, Sub patient supported, they can still live. So mm. counseling is very, very critical mm -hmm. in any illness, whether it is cancer or any other, you have to be assisted to understand what you're going through and then understand how to live with your problem. Masi, how do you, do, how do you <laughs> deal, with, deal with cases that are so severe? The, sometimes you look at just, uh, you just look at a patient <laughs> and then you're like, wow, this, <laughs> I don't know, how? <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that's part of the journey mm. because you will have one patient who is not so sick and you'll have another who is very sick and, mm -hmm. and you, have to, you have to meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. You have to, at, at whatever point they come to you because um, what we say in palliative care is that uh, you matter because you are. As long as you're breathing, then you mm -hmm. have to be taken care of. Uh, the, 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 the word that used to be, that many patients come to us with is that I was told there is nothing that can be done. And that is a word we don't use in palliative care. Okay. There is no way you can say nothing can be done and this patient is still breathing. Something can always be done Something as long as they are breathing. Mm -hmm. Something can mm -hmm. always be done. Mm -hmm. Even if I will not cure you, mm -hmm. we can talk of other things. L you know? Looking well, at perpetual here. Before, mm -hmm. before we went on there, you said mm -hmm. that she is a miracle. She is mm -hmm. a miracle. She is a beneficiary of the services we offer. Mm -hmm. If you had seen her, maybe some... Is it six months ago? Mm -hmm. She was bedridden. She could not move. She was in a lot of pain. We had to go literally to her house every week to give her intravenous fluids, painkillers, and just the other supportive care that she required. And then with time, she gained her strength. She was able to eat. Mm -hmm. She's gone back to doing her small businesses because wow. she needs to earn a living. And that's the whole purpose of palliative care. So Masi that you get back on your feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Start earning a living and taking care of yourself and your family. Umerudi kwa kufanya biashara sasa? Biashara gani unafanya sasa? Kusa sabuni. 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 So unajitengenezea, munafa? Nilikuwa nimeonyesa kijanangu juu ya hiyo kemiko kukusa nishida juu ya ya mfua mm. sasa mtoto um, wangu na muonyesha file atategenesa juu ni kwa nimesomea mm -hmm. na wanategenesa na na usadio ni kwa napata fare kwenda mm. paka hospitali mm. okay eh. okay she, she's very hard working she's hard working she's hard she working. brings I, it I, I, I love what i see <laughs> she brings it to the hospice she mm. sells to people and mm -hmm. she gets her transport she gets her money for her meals mm. so palliative is all about life as I say. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. Okay, <laughs> this is okay. Mm. This is just a, this this is just a sample of what she does. Okay. Mm. She does soaps, she does detergents and other things. And Which? she's she uh, and she, you're earning a living mm. based on this. Mm. Mm. Have you seen patients and uh, maybe I will, I will come to you, Mercy, mm. patients who give up? And uh, they say that I don't want you, uh, you know, to continue with this journey anymore. Patients who give up, how do you still bring them back? Um, 
I will tell you why patients give up. Eh? Mm -hmm. Patients give up because their symptoms are not controlled. Mm -hmm. Immediately you control the symptoms of the patient, mm -hmm. they have a reason to live on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. They have a reason to live on. Mm -hmm. So um, the best thing you do with a patient is that you, you read between the lines. Mm -hmm. They will come and even tell you, I've been contemplating suicide. Mm. But when you listen, you realize this man has not slept for three weeks. He's had uncontrolled pain. He's not able to eat. He's not able to interact. And they just see doom in front of them. So they're giving up. They're giving up some, most times, actually almost 100% is uncontrolled symptoms. Mm -hmm. For as long as a patient's symptoms are controlled, mm -hmm. Usually, they will have the willpower mm. to move on and to live on. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. And the willpower mm. comes from themselves. Mm. It comes from themselves. Mm. But for as long as they have no pain, they have no symptoms that are uncontrolled, they have no. And, and when we talk about family in palliative care, family plays a big role. Mm -hmm. When patients do not have a social support, mm -hmm. they give up. They give up. Mm. Yeah, so mm. you need to actually bring in the other family members. Mm -hmm so that this patient feels they've not been left alone. Mm -hmm. But neglected patients, uncontrolled symptoms, mm -hmm. desperation, mm -hmm. lack of, you see now Perpetua is selling her little soap mm -hmm. and getting her bus fare. Mm -hmm. That keeps her going. Mm -hmm. She's able to come to KBC and take a matatu, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. probably she will leave me with this soap and tell me, give me 50 shillings and take this soap. And she has fare to go back home. It gives her something to look mm -hmm. forward to. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah? mm -hmm. So okay. it is just the small things. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not the big things that patients are asking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just the small things that are neglected that make the patients give up. And if I can go back to the issue of the misdiagnosis, mm -hmm. which you talked about, our patients are being found in stage four, stage three, and all that. It's because cancer does not come knocking loudly and saying, <laughs> here I am and I'm cancer. Mm -hmm. Cancer mm -hmm. comes like any other disease. Mm. For, and the, patient, the, the story repeats in itself over and over again. Mm. When patients come to you, they will tell you, I had this uh, common cold that was not going away. I take Piriton, I take Celestamine, I take ginger, and it doesn't go. Mm. And eventually, when I went to hospital, I was told I have nasopharyngeal cancer. Mm. So it, it comes like any other disease. So any disease that you're seeing that you're, you're, you've even gone, and uh, unfortunately, Kenyans have this behavior of going off the counter. Mm. They just go to a counter and say, <laughs> Naumu anatumbo, anambiwa shika acto. Anaenda anakunywa acto, then after the actual, they feel, oh, badu inauma kiasi. Anarudi tena kwa ile chemist. Anasema, let me change the chemist. They don't see qualified doctors. Mm. And by the time they are seeing the doctor, then they are told, I think you need a CT scan. And mm -hmm. the CT scans now start showing other things. So any small symptom that someone is having that is repeatedly coming on and off mm -hmm. should never be taken for granted. Mm -hmm. I know we have issues with the primary health care. Yeah. I remember when I was young, there was a city council hospital in my neighborhood <laughs> where even a neighbor could take me because there's no payment. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, even when my mother is not there and I fall and I have a bruise, Anyone a neighbor can, could can pick me pick and take, take me to mm -hmm. those primary healthcare facilities. Yeah. This is where we went wrong. Mm -hmm. because they are able to deal with small, small things and notice mm -hmm. them as they come. Mm -hmm. But right now, if I feel unwell, I will have to start bargaining between buying unga and seeing a doctor. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that is why most of the diagnoses are being caught late because people are not having, uh, and even in HIF, I am told if, if you have an HIF, then you have to go to a specific hospital which you have chosen. And this specific hospital probably uh, is not having the kind of care that I need. So all this restriction, I think we just need to go back to the basic where we lost it. And we, we the need that primary, primary health care. Mm -hmm. Where people have access for the little small things mm -hmm. because it is these little small things that we are coming to discover later are cancer mm -hmm. stage four. Okay, mm -hmm. when it comes to access, let me ask you a question. Uh, you know, 
kwa ile harakati za kutafuta madawa mm. kupata matibabu kutafuta hata daktari ama hata kupata mtu ambaye anaweza kulinda ama kukusaidia mm. uh, you know, nyumbani mm. changamoto gani ulipita katika safari hiyo safari ile nilipitia ya ngumu ni kukosa pesa mm -hmm. juu kansa iko na bei sana ukienda hospitali unaambiwa sijui fanya hivi fanya na yote inatakika na pesa mm -hmm. na wakati unafika hapo hata unaambiwa appointment inarudishwa mpaka mwaka ile ingine ndio mm. wende utibio na kansa inaendelea ikinea ikikula na pesa nayo una uliambiwa ukuje baadaye ukuje baadaye ukuje hata unafika tuseme hii mwezi ni wa nane unaambiwa appointment yako ni ya mwaka hiyo ingine na saa hiyo ngojo inaendelea na unaumia baba na unaumia mm -hmm. ukienda hiyo si waka ngojwa inaanza ina inaendelea tu kabisa ndio ukiwa i, ulikuwa unafikiria iko kidogo inafika 3b juu kasa yangu imefika 3b juu nilikuwa ime ni kula sana na na ikawa iko na bei mtu ule ako na kasa anapitia mangumu pesa hakuna na unafika pahali baka unashido utafanya namna gani na ukienda kwa daktari anakuambia sijui rudi lini sijui rudi lini saa hiyo hata bidii hata kusimama uwezi na ikawa iko na shida ikawa iko na shida juu ndio mimi wakati nilianzia hiyo ikafika pahali nikatupa hope ya kuishi mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hapo ulikuwa unaona hakuna ajira. Nilikuwa naona hapa hakuna tumaini ya kuishi. Juu mm. ukienda unaambiwa kuja enda ulipe pale una pesa. Mm. Unaenda operation sijui toa deposit sijui pesa ngapi. Hata ninakumbuka kuko siku nilifungio St Francis Hospital juu ya mm. bill. Ulifungwa nani? Dan. Ninakaa huko juu sina pesa ya kulipa. Is, isn't that Okay, I don't know. It stirs up emotion when you, when, when you emotions. look at that. Hasira imewahi kukujia kama unafungwa ndani huko. Eh, unajua na pesa? Lazima ufungiwe dio ulipe pesa. Na sasa hiyo unaumisika. Unaumisika. Yeah. How does it come up for you? It's a sad affair when you find um, someone is very sick mm -hmm. with a desperate situation like that are not able to afford. So I think, um, as Masi said, primary health care needs to be enhanced so that we catch up with these things early in life and diagnosis is made early. It makes it less costly, as I said, to treat the patient when it is diagnosed early. But now for the patients mm -hmm. who can't afford, mm -hmm. like for Perpetua, it's mm -hmm. quite sad that she ended up getting locked inside mm -hmm. a hospital because mm -hmm. she could not be able to afford the bills. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. It's mm. all over this country. It happens. Uh, it is something maybe the county governments should take up and see how they can assist some of these patients with the services that are offered. Because the patients are there. They need this service. Mm -hmm. And they'll always walk through those gates to seek the treatment they require. So the support they require is really access to that service and being released to go home and continue with their life yeah mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and and, and must you said that it is not about uh, y yourself you're looking at the desires of the patient mm -hmm. as long as they are alive mm -hmm. y there is something to be hoped for mm -hmm. and uh, it makes me want to you know wonder putting it into pers perspective here the aspect of money and the aspect of the will to do what you want regardless of the money, which may not be there. But then how do you cope up with it, even as, a, you know, as, a, as palliative caregivers? Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think what, what I would say is that um, the medical fraternity needs to accept one thing. Uh, our doctors, our nurses have been to school, and we know sometimes how this disease will go. Actually, most time, there is recorded evidence of when a patient is having this particular disease, this is what we are expecting. And the best thing is to educate the patient fully. Let the patient understand everything. Let the patient know that from here, you may probably get this. 
and after this, this might come, so that they can plan their budget. Because if this patient knows that uh, this symptom can be controlled in this particular way and in a cheaper way this way, then they will budget and decide uh, maybe probably instead of going for a drip in Nairobi Hospital, I can call the hospice to give me the drip at home. But you know, sometimes How be, much will this cost me? You're giving them being admitted. information that they do not want yeah. to, to hear, that this is how bad it can get. <laughs> no, most patients know. Many people know. Many people know. Many people know. Many people know. And in fact, if you talk to patients, they will tell you, I took care of a patient with this same diagnosis, and this is how things went. <laughs> they have an idea mm. on how things will be. Mm. And, and, and the best thing is let the patient know the truth. Don't give patients half-half information and tell them, when you get that, that symptom, we will know what to do when we get there. And mm. then take advantage of the patient, admit a patient unnecessarily, Mm. Then the patient gets stuck in hospital and is not mm. able to pay a bill. Because if, if you look at um, most studies mm -hmm. in palliative care, doctors and nurses have been interviewed on if you're diagnosed with cancer stage 4, what would you choose? And most of them say, I would choose palliative care. But they don't tell that to their patients. Okay. They give mm. their patient mm. hope, mm. they give their patient active mm. treatment mm. to the end. Mm until this patient has run out of money, then they say, maybe you can look for palliative care. Mm. It's unfortunate, mm. but it's happening. But I think it is best for patients to have the whole truth. This is what we are expecting, this is what might happen, and let the patient make their plan and plan their finances according to how, what you have told them. Mm -hmm. But just place the whole truth there in a sensitive way, not in a rough way, but let the patient have mm -hmm. some idea and let mm -hmm. them know where else they can look for help. Don't grab a patient and make the patient feel like without me, mm -hmm. you have no other way. <laughs> okay. Let the patient uh, know there are these other options. In. There mm -hmm. are these other options. The idea of owning a patient is wrong. This patient is supposed to know all the options they have. If I want an admission, Nairobi Hospitals is this much, Kenyatta is this much, St. Francis is this much, can I afford it? Mm -hmm. So that we avoid this thing of patients mm -hmm. getting locked up mm -hmm. in a hospital because they cannot mm -hmm. pay. Okay. And we need our hospitals to also tell the patients the truth. Don't tell the patient, give us a deposit of 10,000, mm -hmm. and when the patient is in there, you're charging 50,000 a day, <laughs> and the patient has no idea. <laughs> then at the end of the day, they are given a bill of two million. Papecho venye uli fungiwa na ukai uli shindo kupata pesa. Nini lifanyi kwa ili wazi utoka kwa ino kukatika hali hiyo. And uli sabo uli choka katika apu katikati. Nini lifanya sasa royaku irudi useme enyewe kumbe inawezekana. Ila kitu ilituma niona itawezekana na kubuka Masi alikuja kuniagalia uko St. Francis, akanza akanipatia tumaini. Nika wanamulisa kweli, akamuambia mimi hapa sita rudi na hospitali sita eda tena, mi, nitakuwa muna kuja nimi muna nitibia kwa nyumba. Akaniambia utatoka juu mungu wako, mimi ni watu walichanga. Nikaambia uh, watu wa, wakanichangia, dio nitoke na nikawa niko na ukali sana juu roho yangu ilikuwa imetoka hapa nikajiuliza ikiwa ni kansa imetuma nifungio hapa afadhali niage niondoke na no, ulitoka ulitoka vipi hapo umefungiwa pesa hakuna eh wakati nilienda ni ni wrong book ile kwa dio kwanza nitoke Mm. She, she has a very good support system in her community. Mm. Mm. So friends and well-wishers came to her aid okay. uh, to support her to clear, and she was released from hospital. Mm -hmm. Then we picked it up from there and continued visiting her at home. Up to today, we still see her. Mm. Now she's able to come to the hospice, mm -hmm. but before, we, were, we, we used to go to her house. Mm. 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 You know, most people don't have that ability to get the family the, 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 the or community <laughs> who can be able to pull you out of a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but, but perpetua, mm. sasa baada ya kukutana na, na masi, mm. sasa masi akaja kakusaidia, mm. um, katika safari, mm. 
amekutoa katika hali gani sana sana mm. hata ukiangalia jinsi ulivyo saizi mm. ni nini ambao unaweza kumbuka useme yenyewe na kumbuka hii ilifanyika mm. lakini mm. kama si hii mm. kama, kama si huyu mm. singekuwa hapa eh <laughs> <laughs> eh mimi ile kitu ilituma nione na niangalie nione masi kuko pahali alinisaidia <laughs> kwanza alikuja nimesema alinipatia tumaini ya kuishi akawa ananipatia nguvu na kuniambia mtu anaishi hata akinitibu alikuwa ananiambia ninakutibu nikijua Mungu anatedaga maku Mungu ndo anatedaga Mungu anatedaga maku mm -hmm. na nisitupe tumaini hata kwanza ikuwa imefika wapi Mungu anajua na wakati uh, nilimwambia file ninaendelea masi uh, uh, siku nyingine akanipigia akaniuliza akani papecho huko tu na umeshikilia Mungu nikamwambia eh mimi niko hapo juu hata nilikuwa nimetupa unjua mtu akiwa amerojeka mm. aoni mtu ule yako karibu atayesamwambia kitu asikie nilisikia masi juu alikuwa rafiki yangu wa karibu wa karibu juu hata nikimpigia simu anakibia baka huko hospitali alikuja mm. na, na, na umeka kwa muda mgani na ugonjwa wa saratani eh hii saratani nilianzia 2014 ikarudi okay. saa nikawa nimepatia kemo radiotherapy alafu tena ikarudi saa hii wanasema iko kwa mgongo na kidney iliguswa ya pade ya right saa hii ninaenda kuoso wa kidney. Mm -hmm. Na ninaenda na hiyo safari. Nikisikia uchungu ninajua maso yako anipatia dawa. Jua mm -hmm. hata ukienda hapo hospitali hakuna dawa unapatiwa unaenda unaambia wende ulipe una pesa. Una pesa ya kununua madawa na safari ni ngumu ya ya saratani. Ukiwa uko na mtu wako karibu anakupatia tumaini tu ya kuishi. Mimi ni mmoja wa kusema nitaishi juu hospice imenisaidia. Imenisaidia. Sio kawaida uite mtu akuja baka kwako na saa hiyo ujitoi pahali huko. Na walikuwa na waoni haibu hata nikiambia file niko wananitibu tu. Ndio ninasema mimi pahali hospice imenitoa imenitoa bari. Mm. Oh. Cool. I thank God for you. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God for you. It takes a lot of heart to, to do what you do, mm. especially when it comes to taking care of your patients. Mm. But now, I wonder, how does it af affect you as a person? Um, <laughs> I'll say it's not easy, mm. but... Uh, I think the fuel that keeps us going, because mm. I'm not alone, we are a team. Mm. The fuel that keeps us going is that smile you see that on perpetual space. Because I mean, I'm a good one, I'm a It's that smile you see on perpetual space. Mm. Mm. I remember when we saw her in her house, she was totally dehydrated. She could not get out of the seat. She saw us and she just started crying. And we, were, yeah. mm. and we just mm. went and put up a drip and knew, let's give her some energy. She had not eaten for some time. She had no appetite. So we give a drip, and after the drip, she has some energy, and you sit down and talk. And we were <coughs> not sure we will see her again in hospice. As, as can give us, we were not sure. Have you reached that point in time mm. when you, you, you mm. just feel like you're, you're giving up? Because the, the disease had really advanced. You would palpate her abdomen and you can just feel masses. Eh? And you're wondering, oh my God, now what next? Let's just mm -hmm. control the pain mm -hmm. and control the symptoms and make sure this girl eats. Make sure she's able to reach the toilet. And where she lives, she has to walk to the toilet. So you're wondering, do we bring what we call a commode, which is just a mobile toilet? We mm -hmm. have such facilities in hospice where we can make it easier even for the nursing at home. So do we bring a commode next to her bed? so that she's able to use it there and she doesn't have to walk. <coughs> and then after like two weeks, 
you're in hospice and you see perpetual walk to hospice. Wow. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. that that gives you that changes mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, it just makes you feel I have energy to do this again <coughs> and again. Yeah. One, so, one thing mm -hmm. that also helps mm -hmm. them as patients, mm -hmm. we ask them to come as a group every Thursday okay. for group therapy sessions mm -hmm. so that they support also each other. So you see, once you see somebody who was very unwell, you are not seeing her for several weeks, walking through the gates, coming and sitting with you, sharing her story, it encouraging the next patient. And also us as caregivers, we get encouraged. So, so patients mm. normally get mm. uh, the ability to interact with one another? With one, one another. another, yes. It's very critical because they support each other as well so that you don't feel that my problem is bigger than the other person. When you hear her story and then the other one tells her story, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she'll believe hers is nothing compared to what the other person has just shared. <laughs> okay. And that gives them just the motivation to continue living. Yeah, because I, yeah. mm -hmm. psychologically, human beings believe that yes. what they have gone through is, is worse is the worst. Mm -hmm. than what other people have gone exactly. through. Exactly. Yes. Papacho, I'm going to tell you a story 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 I'm going to tell you Mm -hmm. Ukasikia mtu anakuambia amepitia hii mm -hmm. amepitia hii na ako hapa ukawa unaona wewe kusema ukweli mko wengi mnapatiana nguvu mimi niki at the hospice ninajikasa sana hata nikiwa nimeenda kuosho kidini nifike hapo ndio nikuta mwingine naye ako chini nimwambie fira unaniona sio fira nilikuwa jana mm -hmm. jungufu tunaweka naga nguvu mm -hmm. juu taisa kuta mwingine awe sisema niko na kanza juu ataki anaona e eh, awe sitaja kama fira mimi nilikuwa nimefika mwisho mm -hmm. inafika ukatanya utaki hata kutaja kwamba ukona hata kutaja unasikia nguvu Unakuta mwingine hata ataji fi pahali ya megojeka. Nae hiyo inakufikisha pahali kistigi madia ukonae juu utaki kusema, juu unaona ule ajasema kitu, hata mimi sita sema, juu mimi nitakufa. Unakufa peke yako, unaongea, utaki kuongea, hata ukitaja uwezi, taja ueleze file safari unaenda na hapa ukienda sasa mnashikana unaambia mwingine niko hivi hata saa hii nimetoka kidini nimetoka kwa kemo na tuko safari moja ndio mm. naye mwingine anaamka anaongea safari mnatebesa pamoja wow mm. wow and, and and i would like to get it from you perpetual <laughs> wakati uliambiwa kwa saratani <laughs> familia yako because now we are looking at the acceptance rate <laughs> in the in the society <laughs> walipokea vipi ujube huwa ya kwamba wewe uko na uko na saratani mm. na walikuwa wanakuongelesha vipi kabla uambie ujumbe ukilinganisha na baada ya kupata ujumbe kama huu okay wakati nilijua hiyo ujumbe mimi hata sio mimi kwanza niliambiwa mm. banangu ndiye alielezewa juu nilikuwa chini mm. sio wakati alielezewa akuniambia Aku nierezea, juu anaona niko chini. Ali nipereka hivi hivi, nikakubuka nilipigio simu umesikia nikisema Dr. Bazire. Mm. Mm. Dio akanipigia simu nikiwa kwa nyumba, yeah. akaniambia papechua unatakikana hospital. Nikasema na jana nilikuwa, nalewe kwa, kwa nini naeda na jana nilikuwa. Mm. Wanani, wananita kwa nini? Wananita kwa nini. Mm. Sasa mza wangu tayari ya likuwa melezewa. Tio ni kasema, ay, nini, diyo wakati nili ingia, nika enda tu, haka nifose, haka nabia, enda, kwa enda baka hapo, nika kuta daktari sita wakiwa kwa rumu. Nika shidu ni nini, kwe ni kona shida gani. Daktari sita wameka kwa kitu wana kumbojea. Eh, nika shidu, pape chua ibu, ana nipebresa, pape chua kuja, nika kaa hapo. Nika ambio, kwanza nika ambio ni kunyo maji. Kasa unaya na niabia ni kunyo maji na sina kiu. Sasa nika nilikunwa. Naka niulisa uli unaedara ya je nini nini. Wakati aliniambia tumekuita. Dio ujue fire uko 
na tunataka tunataka tufanye namna gani ndio uendelee na safari mm. doctor nakumbuka sana doctor Bosira aliniambia uko na kanza na ndio nimekuita akaniweka kado ni ndio nimekuita ndio ni kueleze mm. na tunataka utibiwe eh kusoma ukweli wakati aliniambia hivyo nikasikia sijui ni gari nitajikogesha sijui nitafanya namna gani <laughs> na nikalia machozi saidi nikalia nikijiuliza sasa nitaishi aje hii ngoje imetokana wapi eh tukieta si nimeelezewa na nikaambiwa file nitaanzia bahati mzuri ule daktari akuniwa akuniwacha akaanza kuendelea na kunifuata na kusikia file niko akawa niko chini damu inaisha hata ninakumbuka watoto wengine wa university nimewekwa damu nyingi sana inaisha ninarudi nawekwa baka hata naye damu ikawa iko na shida hata saa hii watu wale wako na hii safko wale wana breed unakaa ukibreed baka ukienda hospitali unabiwa hakuna damu tafuta watu wakuja wakupea damu na sio sio wote wanajitolea nikaenda nikaweka kwanza point nane. nikakaa kwa ward nikapeleka kwa operation bali nilienda operation nilienda operation mara ngapi mara tano na si, wakati niliambiwa kansa yako pahali iko iko 3b ah nikasema hii ni kifo sasa hakuna mambo mengine jina inasikia watu ni kukufa mtu mimi najua mtu ukisikia amegojeka kansa atakufa sasa watu wangu wa wa waku nitupa mm. ile mtu anasemanga mimi sikutupa juu mm. nilikuwa wananiweka karibu mm. wananiambia hii safari tutaenda hapa kwa hapa tukiwa na wewe baka watoto wangu hata ninakumbuka niko na kijana anaitwa Gakuru Gakuru ni kijana wangu aliniambia mam usijali kwa hii yote tuko na wewe hata ananipeleka Kenyatta ananipeleka ni mtoto wako ni mtoto wangu niko na watoto tano tano niko na watoto tano hata niko na mtoto wako standard date saa hii na mwingine ako fo na niko na tujukuu hapo niliwachiwa kijana kijanangu kijana kijanangu mtoto bebe yake akaenda akawacha watoto wachanga niko na hawa hapo tunaishi na hawa when okay okay um nataka kujua sasa it was it for her that was it for her mm. now i'm looking at it for now the society where we have a society that, that at some point we do not yet know the acceptance rate in kenya mm. you've been uh, the ceo for nairobi hospice mm. you've you, you've worked there you've you've uh, seen how it is how do you see the society when it comes to uh, um the acceptance rate towards cancer towards this menace you know there's a lot of stigma in this country when it comes to cancer many people hide they don't want to be known they have cancer so that in itself brings a problem in the society because you have somebody in the home who is sick you don't want to tell your neighbor you don't want to tell your colleague that this is cancer because it comes with its own other effects along the way so mm -hmm. stigma, stigma is a very big problem in this country and if we can overcome that then it will be easier to deal with the issues around society mm. yeah because um, for you to be managed well you need the support of everybody but like the stigma her, is still there stigma, stigma is still there you see like how she was open the community around her assists her very much so she's able to live a, a dignified and normal life when you when you hide people don't know what you're going through so you lock yourself out there in your room, in your house or your home. Nobody's, you keep going to the hospital in and out, in and out. At sometimes you don't even need to be in hospital. As Masi said, some of these issues can be managed even at home. There, there, there are simple symptoms that can be managed at home. You don't need to be in the hospital all the time. So if we can overcome stigma, then things might be better in this country. 
so that we can manage everybody freely and comfortably. Yeah. Because as, as, as caregivers, you find a patient coming to you, you become the family. Mm -hmm. Because they couldn't share out there, or when they shared, the people ran away. One lady came and told us, when she told her church members that she had can uh, cancer of the breast, everybody stopped sitting next to her in the church. In the church? Yes. So oh. she had to move church and go to another church and stopped disclosing what her problem was. And you would expect the church would be the place where we find consolence. Yes. It was an unfortunate mm -hmm. situation, but uh, she forgave them and just moved on with her life. But if you see her today, she has gone through her treatment. She's been to for palliative care and all that. She's leading a very normal life, and she's able to do her things as normal as possible. So if we can overcome stigma and just accept that we have this problem in society, just the way I can tell you I have diabetes, you'll still work with me, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But when you say you have cancer, people start running away. I don't know whether they associate it with the cost that will, be, will come with it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's the same reaction that yes. was there many years back when HIV came yes. into the country mm. or something like that. Mm. Yeah, because HIV, when people used to say I have HIV, mm -hmm. you would sit away from me. You would not share a cup with me. Not even greet them. Not even greet me. But these days people hug, they share a cup of tea, they eat together. These patients, when they come to us on Thursdays, we have a meal with them, we have a cup of tea with them. We just mingle. You might not know who is the patient because they are looking it, so normal. It means <laughs> that we, we mm. need to create public awareness. Public, a serious public awareness. A serious public awareness on uh, what it means, what palliative care means. Because it's a, it's a complementary care to what the doctor does in the hospital. So we are not um, competitors in the field. We are complementing the service that is offered to the patient. There's a curative part and there's a support side. So when people just are open about these things, refer patients in good time, in, involve palliative care providers in good time, then the patient is able to be assisted early and better. Yeah. Would you say the same when it comes to uh, you know, education? You've dealt with patients, you've dealt mm -hmm. with family. Mm -hmm. Are people more aware concerning what palliative care is all about? Do people know the details, the nitty gritties concerning palliative care and the responsibilities that a caregiver should be, should, should be providing? Because I believe you are not always there with the patient 24 seven. Yeah, that is true. I, um, the caregiving side is really a big challenge because most of these patients are being taken care of by people who have no training whatsoever in anything medical mm -hmm. and these are the people we are expecting will take care of the patient in our own little way in Nairobi hospice we run courses for non healthcare providers anyone can apply for the course and we just teach you the basic of how to take care of a patient if this happens, what do you do at home and all that? Huh? Uh, the caregiving aspect is really, really a big challenge. And sometimes, apart from the stigma, there is fear. The relatives are so afraid when they start seeing these symptoms. And sometimes the best they can do is run away. So we, you, you'll start saying the patient is neglected, but the person is actually running away because they cannot cope mm -hmm. with this illness. kind of patient and the illness in the house. That's why they abandon so, Yeah, the they, they, they abandon the patient. So when we go to a home, the first thing is not to judge that, oh, you're neglecting mm -hmm. your patient. The first thing is to know why are you running? Mm. Can we help you? Mm. Can you have our number? Can you call us? Can, you, can we show you how to do this dressing? Can we show you how to feed? Can we show you how to turn this patient? And if you have any challenges, talk to us. So some may yeah. feel they have a reason to, to, to run yeah. away. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you can't blame them. Mm. And you can't blame them. And that is why now palliative care is all inclusive. We want to know you who is running away. Why are you running? Mm. Can we train you? Mm. And mm. The, the training we do in hospice, the non-healthcare professional, we try to make it a very minimal fee. It's 5,000 shillings for a week. And we teach you as much as we can so that when you go and meet a patient out there, you're not afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so those are the challenges. Mm -hmm. The public awareness is also very, very key. Mm -hmm. A lot of educating, and it is good now media is really coming out mm -hmm. strong in this mm -hmm. thing. 
the newspaper, the media, we just need to keep talking about this thing. Mm -hmm. We need people to, to tell us what are the challenges. I have this patient mm -hmm. I'm unable to handle because mm -hmm. of this and mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. and, and professionals are there mm. to guide. We, we need a lot of mm. conversation. So yeah. yeah, like you are sure mm. now, this mm. this is mm. very good public awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. because it's educating people to understand what is palliative care all about. Mm. Because people hear that big word and they wonder. People hear about a hospice and mm. they wonder. We have more than 60 plus hospices across the country offering mm -hmm. the same kind of care. So there's no need for somebody to come from Kakamega to Nairobi for care. They can be managed on the other end. If I have a patient here who needs to move to another county, I can always refer to the other hospice. So mm -hmm. it's time that people came out to support these hospices mm -hmm. because palliative care is part of the treatment process. It needs to be part of the universal health coverage process mm -hmm. within the primary health system within the hospitals. So that as a patient is diagnosed, palliative care is also commenced at the same time. That way, as they complement each other, it works better and then you have a patient who is assisted better, and the families will not run away. Because if it's managed that way, you'll find many will start appreciating what this problem is all about, mm -hmm. and they'll come out and support their patients. Yeah. You, you, you've just reminded me of uh, yeah. you know, what, what has been trending in the, the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the death of uh, the late governor, mm -hmm. Dr. Joyce Laposo, and member of mm -hmm. parliament, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ken mm -hmm. it, it stirred up the debate mm -hmm. you know, of, mm -hmm. of cancer, mm -hmm. and uh, whether we have the proper facilities for cancer, whether we have the hospitals, whether we, ha whether we should make it free. Mm -hmm. Perpetua mm -hmm. has cancer, <laughs> And it, 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 it relates with this discussion mm -hmm. quite well. When, when it comes to you know, this discussion, do you think we are coming in a little bit too late to talk about the awareness that is there within the country? Are we, uh, were we sleeping? Is, is, is this like <laughs> a wake-up call that we're just receiving as a nation? Uh, I think the conversation that is ongoing right now it is very healthy. And um, it's not too late to discuss something. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have done it a lot earlier, but even if we do it now, the better, because cancer is affecting everybody. You, everybody in this country has someone who has suffered from cancer, so you've been affected in one way or the other. So it's a very healthy conversation that it's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And as for the facilities, I think the government is trying its level best to equip the relevant facilities with the equipment, but more can still be done. But the main critical thing that needs to happen is capacity building for the professionals who are going to manage those facilities mm -hmm. so that the care is complete. Because there's no need of having a facility and you don't have the service providers. Okay. So capacity building is critical, both for medical, nurses, oncologists, and whatever, so that as the patients come for care, there are people already available to offer that care. That way you might find there'll be very minimal requirement to go out of the country for treatment. Because Kenya is progressing very well, and we are doing very well, actually. So if we just put in more effort and uh, just improve on what we have already and train more personnel to manage this problem, I think we'll do very well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we bring this discussion to a close, I'd like to mm -hmm. come to you, Perpetua. Um, mm -hmm. Um, Kulele <laughs> ama amejua juzi ya kuna saratani eh, ni ge muambia ajue kukona tumaini na ataishi hii kansa itatua na kuwe na ngufu na ajitokeze ajue ata esatibiwe na apone na akai akijua mungu wako juu tutaishi juu ya, ya mungu na si jifiche aunge as, ajue akona kansa na hii safari aanza kutibiwa aanza kutibiwa ndio tuende safari moja mm -hmm. na si tupe tumaini 
ajue tuko na tuko na kansa na tuta survive Sante sana. Mm. Let's bring this discussion to close. I'd like to come up with you. If you just have a final word, and then I'll, I'll finish with you, okay. uh, Ruth. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion, especially lately, about cancer. But in my opinion, I feel we also need to really put a lot of effort on research mm -hmm. and look for the why. Look for the reason why are these cancers this much? and they were not like this a few years ago. Is it our diet? Is it the fertilizers we are using? Is it exposure to all these toxic things I saw, I think the dump site and all that? Mm -hmm. What is the real problem? Because we may be putting off these fires, <laughs> but we are not going to the root cause. And as long as we're not going to the root cause, we can make as many cancer centers as possible, mm -hmm. but this thing is going down with families. And family unit, is what really builds a nation. When cancer affects a family, people yeah. who have worked with this patient, we can testify that it only does not affect the patient. It affects the child in that house. It affects the husband. It affects the wife. It literally breaks down a family. Not just mm -hmm. the money part, but the emotional, the turmoil and all that. When you imagine a 15 years old being a main carer of a parent in a house and has no means whatsoever. What are you doing to that child? That's a child who will start looking for drugs to cope and all that. So in my opinion, if only this thing could move away from the politics and just come to research and scientists. And we research exactly in Kenya what is causing this thing. So that we start educating our people, so that we start making our cabs more strict, so that they're not just giving a, a muhuri to anybody who is making a cake, and this cake cannot even expire on the <laughs> shelf. We have cakes on our shelves today which have an expiry date, but, but even don't expire. five, five <laughs> weeks down the line, the cake is still fresh. So what is happening? What's happening to our meat? What are we eating? How are we living? So that we prevent this thing before, because it has now gone out of control. Mm -hmm. So we need more research. We need to know exactly what is happening so that the government can help us to put measures and controls. All right. Because it is not my joy mm -hmm. to palliate patients who are 40 years old. It is not my joy to palliate. I have patients who are 20. I have patients who are 12 years. It is very, very painful. But then, who, but then who, whose job is it when it, in mm -hmm. the incident that a 40-year-old patient comes into your hands? You know, now, when, now you, when you look at a 40 years old, you will find children there who are two years, who are three years. How do you prepare a three years old to rule as a parent? Wow. And you can mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. just how much this disease has affected this patient. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare them? It is extremely difficult. And we just start, if we start looking at it peripherally and say so and so died, so and so died, and we just look at it as that distant thing. Mm -hmm. It is until we walk the walk with these patients that we know the pain that we know the devastation this disease is causing. So we need to know exactly where is it coming from. Because we cannot be having people who are making business and making money at the expense of people's lives. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have a final word, Ruth. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ram. Uh, thank you for KBC for this opportunity to discuss this subject. Many people don't seem to understand what palliative care is all about, and I'm hoping that uh, by having this kind of a conversation, People know that palliative care is there to assist, to complement on the care that people get out there. Um, most hospices are available to offer this particular service. Palliative care is about hope. It's about giving hope to that patient who is going through a miserable time with their disease process. So we are there to support the healthcare system to manage those symptoms associated with the illness. We encourage the health practitioners, especially the doctors, to refer patients in good time so that we can co-manage these patients with the doctor and support this patient and their families to avoid the misery that sometimes they go through. So early referrals are critical because many times you find a patient is referred too late when we can't do much. So we just give the supportive care for the few days that are there. But uh, if it is done early, it helps the patient, the family, and even the doctor who is managing that particular patient. Mm -hmm. Patients don't need to be in hospital for long mm -hmm. because they can be managed with those symptoms at home. Mm -hmm. So let people refer patients for palliative care 
and we are there to support and give that service. All right. Yes. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, Ruth. That is Ruth Were, CEO of mm -hmm. Nairobi Hospice, mm -hmm. and uh, Masi Kamau, senior nurse at the Nairobi, uh, at the, uh, Nairobi Hospice, and uh, to uh, and in the middle there, Perpetua Ngumi, a patient and a beneficiary of uh, palliative care. And uh, just all in all, God is good. All the time. Yeah, all the time. Thank you so much. Thank, mm. you mm. thank you very much for coming. And uh, Perpetua, I mm. wish you the best. Mm. You're a strong woman and continue doing what, you, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, her story has inspired many. Mm -hmm. Being bedridden, now she can be able to come to mm -hmm. studio mm -hmm. and share her story to, yes. to the nation. Yes. Mm -hmm. May God bless you, Perpetua. I mm -hmm. wish you the best. Well, thank you so much. It's yeah. all about mm -hmm. matters health this morning when it comes to, you know, uh, when, when it comes to palliative care, what palliative care has been all about. Do you have any comments on this? Keep the tweets coming in. The hashtag is Good Morning Kenya on Twitter at KBC Television. Tag me at Ram Aguko. This discussion still continues. Remember, Good Morning Kenya is taking a short break. We'll be back with Jane Wambui with the next interview. Do not go too far. This is KBC.